Hello, my name's Nick Lunch and I'm part of the Cowley Road Matters team which was set up to ask the local community how they want to improve safety of the road, reduce congestion and where possible improve the local environment. My role is to coordinate the consultation of hard to reach groups. Work began in May 2003 when I recruited six people from the local community to help me gain access to those people who don't usually get heard on local issues. We were chosen originally because we, uh, we're local people, we're all connected to the Cowley Road and um, we represent different groups in the community. Yeah, a poster! <laughs> on a poster on the wall in Acorn, um, Beth said to me about it as well, that she was going to put me forward for it because she thought I'd be good at it and I enjoy it as well. Has it been worthwhile for you? Yeah, I want to go into media now, so... Yeah. I want to be a nosy journalist. <laughs> uh, an interest in, in photography, in people and the community. And all them three things you were talking to me about, <laughs> which has led me here, man. You know? Have you enjoyed it? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I hope there's a lot more to be getting on with for all of us. The other two members of our team were Bismillah Hidari and Don O'Neill, who both contributed their skills and special links in the local community. Uh, I think uh, this, uh, he need to build the wall, no, it's wall. Since did the consultation, I've noticed so many fences along the Cali Road and there's very little enforcement about trying to get people to not park on double yellows or bus stops and things. It's quite incredible. Yeah. We go to meet people where they're based instead of always expecting them to come to meetings that don't necessarily suit them. We realised that we have to bring the consultation process into the drop-in centres and into places where people meet to make sure that they could take part. We sometimes use video as a way of recording people's views. The reason we use video is because we like to show other groups what you are thinking, what you're saying. So I'm going to also teach you some filming skills, camera skills, so you can film each other. It's called participatory video. It's a special kind of uh, process. So Tanya will show you how to do that. Uh, why film? Because you get to see you get to see people where they are. You get to see, they can sort of relax. You know, we did it in such a way that they could relax. Uh, we made them feel comfortable with the process. Sometimes we'd already been there filming before, so they knew us and they felt comfortable with us. You can see them together as a whole group. It's a wonderful visual way of representing people's points of views that you don't get through using a questionnaire or something like that. My name is Agron. I come from Albania. I have been in England for three years. Thank you. It puts a human face to those, um, those issues. A three-dimensional model of the Cowley Road with photos of all the shops helped people to remember which parts of the road they would like to change. I think it's really important to have information that's accessible information that we can use to explain, like for example, this area of Cowley Road. For example, having photographs of all the different buildings and houses along the road is really good. I think it's a really good idea. And it shows people really clearly where they live in relation to Cowley Road or what problems they might have experienced on the Cowley Road. It's really accessible. Because photographs can tell a story as well. There's a story here and it helps people with learning difficulties remember what they want to say or remember things that have happened to them on Cowley Road. I, I feel participatory video enables the community to communicate on local issues and their feelings on that. We wanted to show 
people from groups who wouldn't normally get a voice, who wouldn't normally be heard. We wanted to show them on film. We wanted them to be represented. What do you like about the, the county road? Oh, I like it, you know, I like it generally as a road. It's got a few nice memories, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's quite, you know, convenient for the Tesco and all the other shops and the boots and, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a good road generally. I love the Zodiac. <laughs> um, I love the bully, uh, the Bullington Arms. Um, I love Nile Valley because uh, the guys in there are great, they're really friendly. Nowadays I think Cairo Road should be left just as it is. Uh, uh, it's got that nice level of seediness in it which I think can be, uh, it should be kept. I, I would hate to see Cairo Road go the way of um, Wharton Street for instance which has now got road humps and it's been tarted up and all these wine bars and, and, and it kills the place in the end. I just like to see a, a nice level of lo local people sauntering up and down the road. It's a bit like Bruno said, it's full of life really for such a small area. Yeah. You could be walking in a suburb of London, it yeah. could be the East End, you know, it could be anywhere. Cowley Road has a certain energy, um, especially here in the Excelsior, that's, this is a focal point as is East Oxford Community Centre and it's a bit of a melting pot for all types of people. Um, different politics, different uh, backgrounds, different ethnicity, things like this. I do love the Continental Food Store because it is the only place I've discovered in Oxford that does hard oat bread and Jamaican buns, so... <laughs> uh, there's a lot of opportunities here if you're sort of in the, into the arts, for instance, uh, or even if you are homeless, there are places here where you can get a meal, right. uh, there's learning centres. The fact that everybody belongs just like in here in the Excelsior, it doesn't matter whether you're a suit, it doesn't matter whether you're a dreadhead, and no matter what we think of who's right and who's wrong, everybody is allowed on Cowley Road. I like Cowley Road, it's a really uh, nice shops there, Asian shops. Uh, I, I always go to Cowley Road to buy my grocery. Yeah. I am a shopper. I am a shopper. I am a shopper. I am a shopper. I I've lived here all my life. I was born in Oxford. Um, I just think the traffic's getting worse and worse. It is Cowley Road. It is obliged to its traffic flow, and there aren't any sensible ways of reducing the traffic flow in the short term on Cowley Road. <laughs> I've been going up and down Cowley Road for 20 years now, and I think it has got worse, really, as time progresses progressed but my only main problem with the route going along on a bicycle is a, it's a buses a number of buses uh, I don't want to do any do anybody out there mode of transport but I think they should be reduced no, I think there's real problems at the Cowley Road for all concerned pedestrians, motorists, buses and cyclists. Um, too many people, too many vehicles packed into a very small area and uh, the system of traffic flow is pretty much broken down. Where um, the lights have bleepers, sometimes they're not very loud or not loud enough, particularly this one here. Um, more so than the one we saw previously. 
perhaps it might be an idea to try and ensure that they have um, the rotating cones underneath the box which actually rotates when the green man is flashing allowing you to go across so if you're um, visually impaired or blind you can't see the green man flashing if you've got lots of traffic going um, you can't necessarily hear the bleeper so the cone gives you the cue to go go across that slide in a wheelchair it's very short crossing time and you're about two thirds of the way across before the light goes green and the car's are quite impatient, they're going to start going, really. I'm not a great fan of traffic islands, mainly because of the, using a guide dog, because the, the guide dog can walk through and get confused whether it's going to stop in the middle or carry on going. Uh, and you're not really sure whether the traffic has actually stopped on the other side, that's basically it. So you can sort of feel as if you're trapped in no man's land, unable to go backwards or forwards. For me, what I find trying to cross at these traffic islands, the middle or the road here, is that you can't really see what's coming. A lot of cars often parked quite close to them. And for me to try and see over the cars is quite impossible. So by the time I go out into the road, to get my eyes out in the road, my feet are already in the road. So for me, if there was less parking near the traffic islands, then uh, it'd be a lot easier to cross the road. But the island's quite good if you want to just nip across rather than go down 100 yards that way or 100 yards this way. Me being partially, me being disabled, with the water pavements, disabled people can ride on the path with care. Do you, do you find that, how do you get around then? The on my tricycle. On your tricycle? And I don't mind riding on the road, but certain circumstances with the cars being t too heavy, I'd have to go up on the path sometimes. Pedestrianisation, I think it should be given slightly more over to, to the people again. Yes. Uh, I mean, the traffic could always be diverted. The other two roads, Clements and Effley, for instance, it's not that far out if they took Ifley Road. It's not going to take people that yeah. much further out. Where to would get you pedestrianise it? Which well, it would have to be, well, obviously in the very centre itself, well, from where the gardens are, yeah. all the way really along towards the plain. There has to be some sort of cycle lane designated in the road. Yeah. Maybe find, make Cowley Road, no parking on Cowley Road, and find parking elsewhere. Mm. You know how we've done with uh, Kun Market Street? Yeah. It'll be nice. Pedestrianise. Yeah, pedestrianise it. Well, I'd like to see motor vehicles stop completely at Cowley Road. I'd like it to be a car free zone. How would people get deliveries to the shops and things like that? Well, possibly that could be done um, in off peak times. Right. Um, I have to come down here to do my grocery shop, yeah. to go to the halal meat shop. Sure. And it's not only people living in Oxford that use the Cali Road, there's other people from different towns. Right. I've got relatives in Whitney, they have to everyone come all the way around. Right. Everyone spread around. They have to come all the way from Whitney just to do shopping here, to do their um, halal meat shopping. Okay. And even like they don't have mosques there, so. Yeah on like Fridays. Fridays are a nightmare on Cali Road around any East Oxford area, Friday is a nightmare because of um, the mosque and people have to come they come from all areas just to pray, yes. You know when it's dark and you've got all the light sort of coming at you in all directions from the cars and the buses and I think you've got to be well lit up, you know, with your bicycle because they wouldn't see you, you know, and you just end up sort of you know, sort of on the ground perhaps, you know. At night I don't like driving along Cowley Road because it feels like an obstacle course with pedestrians running in and out the street, um, it's dim lighting. So I'm not too sure what, what could be done about that, but as a driver I would like to, to feel safer, you know, driving at night, hoping and praying that I don't knock somebody over. Yes. The old cock up on the county road is purely down to inconsiderate, illegal and legal parking. 
I don't know why we pay taxes for a car because we can't park anywhere. Yes, you can park behind Tesco's, but sometimes you want to go further down, don't you? And and you 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 just can't you can't park anywhere without having to be in fear of a traffic warden, do you know? And there's so much there's so much resident parking. There's actually no one hour parking. There's only maybe about four spaces that you can actually park in as a driver, do you know? There shouldn't be any parking on the county road at all. Because you've got people ignoring the zigzags for the pedestrian crossings, commercial and private vehicles. You've got the police that are too busy or don't care to do anything about it. They just drive by it when they see it. The buses can't get on the bus stop so their asses are stuck out in the middle of the road. So you've got congestion. In front of shelves, shelves there's a double yellow line. Right. So you can't park. Yeah. Yeah. But do you use the car park at Tesco? No, it's too far away. Sometimes I buy rice, basmati rice or onion, and it's uh, five, ten kilo, and I can't walk to the Tesco car park. Right. Yeah. So where would you put new parking on Cali Road? Uh, on the main road. On the main road. Yeah. So on the main road. Yes. Here, I think in front of the house should be free parking places. Where is that? Yeah. Bangladesh. Yes. Yes. In yeah, front Chindale of the house. Yeah. Free parking. Yeah. Children come to study in the mosque and uh, adults come to do the prayer. So a lot of people is here. And if it's free parking, it would be better. They will be safer because children can just come out of the car and just go in the car. I need more to see more murals expressing the different cultures, the multicultural nature of Kauli Road. Yeah. yeah. And have um, a lot more cultural things going on, like street, what do they call them, them that sing and uh, busking. Busking. I've seen them put um, a lot of trees and seatings on, on Kauli Road, and I think that is really excellent, nice idea. People can just relax. However, I, I see a lot of empty shops and sometimes they look unsightly like the place is a bit deserted so if um you know the graffiti couldn't be there the posters couldn't be there if we could add some poster signs or something would be a lot better but as I said, it's all to do with British University, university, so people yeah. can come yeah. and use it more on a regular basis they don't want people the locals will be safe here, here. Huh? no they don't want the locals here no and they haven't done for a long time so, I feel that so, as well. so this whole thing about this one million thing, it's not, it's not for people here, it's for, for the future of them making money. Yep. Because most people don't actually go to the town, we come to Howley Road. Yeah. But if it becomes too expensive now as a result of the gentrification, then we won't be able to cope. And some people will be more, I mean, like I say, it's quite vibrant, and people will be more isolated in their respective communities and it won't be our street anymore. At the moment it is our street. Calibre can provide their own money from their own businesses to do their own, to build up themselves. Yeah. The council mm -hmm. don't have to give Calibre a million pounds. Yeah. Mm. Right. And when you walk on the Cali Road, do you find enough space on the pavement? I get enough space on the pavement, but sometimes I have to really eat down by cycle. Cyclists? Because, yes, because the they're riding on the pavement there. And they just skip right over you. You don't see them when they come in, but you only see the cycle go around you like that. Right. So that is unsafe. But we, the elderly people especially. This bit here, particularly for someone that's got um, mobility impairments such as myself, with not much cl ground clearance when I'm walking, being so uneven, it can catch you out, as it actually did just as we approached here. I didn't know anything about it and tripped up on the stones. Right. Um, I think it's important to think about how disabled people use the shops, whether they can get in and out of the shops, if the shops are fully accessible. Okay, so down on the opposite side of this, of the bingo, and what do you, what's the problem with the pavement? The pavement, you have some, um, some bricks and things, they're not level. Right. Some is very um, high up, some low, yeah. and don't care, try and cut into the shoe, how can you finish up? The shoe come off in the street. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah. happened to you before? It's terrible, yes, yes. So you want to try and stop cars yeah. parking on pavements? Yeah, I think that should stop. Okay. And I think the other thing should be stopped. It's bicycles and the pavement, we're supposed to, because they've got their bicycle truck at the moment, they said bicycles, and I don't think that should be allowed. So bicycles cycled on the pavement? Should be on the road, on the road. not on the path.
this area is usually sort of rammed with bikes. The way I'm standing, you wouldn't normally be able to stand because it's uh, bicycles. Yeah. Which means you're restricting the amount of space you've actually got to walk out in the pavement. This is compounded because you've got bollards set into the pavement from the kerb and the normal sort of street furniture like signposts and whatever. So you're actually walking through quite a narrow gangway and negotiating that through other people. If you're working with a guide dog it's bad enough but with a cane and shopping it's almost impossible. So it's a very difficult area and once you get actually to the doors there are two cash points and you, very often you have two queues of people actually sticking out. So it's a bit like running a gauntlet, just getting to the shop. Uh, what, what would you do, what, what would be your idea to solve this problem? 